Well, hello, everybody. I am the Orca Theory. Welcome back to Dark Souls 3. Uh, we have about mm, 11,000 souls. We are going to take those back to Firelink Shrine just to see what we can do with them. Um, the agenda today, because uh, we did the upper perimeter of the Cathedral of the Deep, kind of got through a little bit of the actual cathedral itself to open up that first shortcut. And we're going to explore some of the innermost depths. Um, that's our agenda today. Whether or not we actually get to the boss is kind of up in the air. I want to see if maybe we can buy some stuff. Uh, nothing that I'm really, truly interested in. Uh, no weapons, really. No shields. Uh, I don't know if we took a look at the Sage's Big Hat. Yeah, we did. We took a look at the Sage's Big Hat. Just want to make sure. Lloyd's Shield Ring we definitely took a look at. One. Let's see what Grey Rat has. But sooner or later, we're gonna have to send him back out. Oh, hello, hand in one piece. Let's see. Uh, the Pontiff Knife Curve Sword. Exactly. Might, you know, it might be kind of fun to try the Svihanda. It might, since we're running a strength build this time, and he just he. Offers a lot of the the sets that we've seen so far. Um, the hard leather set. I I really miss that set from Dark Souls One. I've, I, as I said in whatever last episode, maybe two episodes ago, um, I've been playing a lot of Scholar of the First Sin uh, for Dark Souls Two, and the hard leather set that they have in there is garbage. <laughs> it's, it looks like garbage. Goodbye. Oh. I always really liked that design from Dark Souls One. Oh, and he is. Oh, he is gone now. Oh, so once you get the five sigils, he just goes. Oh, great. I'm really glad we came back. So, we talked about this. Um, part of his quest line is these uh, sigils that you can get. These five dark sigils, which we kind of talk about is, is kind of like a secondary dark sign. They, uh, they allow humanity to kind of pour out of your body, so to speak. Uh, once you get five, his quest is essentially done. There is a trigger... For him to die just like this. You can see he's dead. I can clip straight through his massive shell body. Um, but uh, once you get past the Farron Woods and the boss of the Farron Woods, which we'll be dealing with a little bit from now, uh, he will die just naturally anyways. Is he moving? No, that's just his clothes. It's just the hair. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, it looks like once you get the five sigils, no matter when you get them, he just passes away anyways. So, let's let's talk to this woman who has shown up. Oh, prithee, art thou good yours, master? I am Yuria of Londor, a close friend of his. Thanks to thee, your soul is redeemed. Allow me to express my gratitude in his stead. And we get the dignified bow gesture. Another matter. Kinda nice. That a lord, art thou not? Bearer of the dark sigil. And our lord of hollows. For the time thou remainst our lord, we of Londor shall serve thee. And I, of course, am also thine. Great. <laughs> so, uh... This is one of the three sisters of the Sable Church of Londor. The Sable Church of Londor we haven't really talked about yet. We talked a little bit about Londor and specifically about undead societies in this world. Where in Dark Souls 1 Dark Souls 2 there were kind of societies but that were ravaged by the undead. This game really explores what happens if the undead retain some sort of civilization. The undead settlement is one such example. Uh, Londor is another one, and it seems like they've got their stuff together. This is not just your typical hollow here. Uh, she is very, very intelligent, very, very well-spoken. She's carrying around a katana, one of the coolest weapons uh, in the game, in my opinion. Um, she is one of three sisters, uh, and, you know, I kind of spoiled myself on the Ashes of Ariandel DLC just because I was pining just to see what was in it, and one of the other sisters is in there, so I'm assuming the third DLC will deal with the third sister, because we, we haven't seen her yet, but uh, it's very obvious that the three sisters are influencing some of the events of Dark Souls 3, whether or not they have a direct influence on what's happening here in Lothric, or mm, if, they, if they're just hanging around to... 
take advantage of the situation. I think that's the best way to word it. But let's see if she has Better anything Lord, else to say. Are not. Bearer of the dark sigil. For the time that okay, so she's got nothing real else to say. She uh, sells some spells, uh, poison throwing knives, the purging stones, which reduces undead curse buildup and cures hollowing. Very, very interesting. A uh, little bit different from uh, how it used to work. Uh, the purging stone used to cure curses, uh, but curse in Dark Souls 1 was a very different thing than it has been in other games. Uh, the she, spelled, sells, she spells some cells. Um, but the interesting things are the items that she's got. The Dark Hand. A uh, weapon that allows its wielder to evoke an art unique to Londor, the land of the hollow. It is also said to be an ancient relic of a primordial serpent. The Dark Hand mercilessly saps the essence of its victims and can also double as a special shield. Cannot be used two handed. And it's got the skill of life drain. So for anybody that's played Dark Souls 1, this is the gift uh, the primordial serpent Kath gave to new londo and the four kings um so the dark wraiths that we saw uh, earlier in this game uh at the the bottom of the tower in the high wall of lothric uh those are remnants of new londo and they wield the dark hand specifically the art of life drain uh very very dangerous folks so this is that connection there this is that direct connection she she does have a bit of dialogue later on that further insinuates her connections to kath but uh, this this pretty much does it in my mind. Uh, untrue Dark Ring. One of the illusory rings worn by the Hollows of Londor retain human appearance while hollow. The Hollows of Londor are wretched, wretchedly aged, fraught with deceit, and dubiously secretive. It is no wonder that they are deeply detested. So Hollows are ugly, 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 ugly things. Um, actually, Till we let me take off end. my helmet because I've got five of these Dark Sigils and I have died a number of times, so I might... I zoom in. Yeah, so you see my face. Um, the way this game uses the hollowing mechanic is the more times you die, the more souls you lose, uh, the more dark sigils you have. There's a bunch of different clicks in the mechanism. Um, the more hollowed out you look, and you can see my face is very, very decrepit. I could use a purging stone, actually, to cure that and to make my face look all right. Um, where's my helmet? Boop, boop, boop. Uh, but the, but so anyways that that Speak ring honorable. what it'll do is it'll make me look normal even when I'm not uh, Speaks to the society of Londor where it, you know in in the land of the hollows I'm sure they're cool with looking hollow out there But for instance once if Yoria is coming to Firelink Shrine She probably wants to look human under that helmet to give the illusion that she's got her stuff together uh, Hollows are not treated well, and we've seen that documented throughout all the souls games the untrue white ring, one of the illusory rings worn by the Hollows of Londor. Take the appearance of a phantom. The Hollows of Londor are wretchedly aged. Yeah, blah 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 blah. Uh, so uh, we haven't done this yet because I haven't really been playing online. Uh, but when you summon a NPC or a uh, an online phantom to support you in a boss or get help you get through an area, they have a white glow to them. This puts that white glow on you uh, for game mechanics purposes it's really handy if you're being invaded a lot when you have a co-op buddy with you because then they won't be able to tell you both apart so where the invader would naturally want to go to the host of the world the person that they're going to get the reward from for killing um they now have to go for both and hope that one of them just happens to be the lucky one uh we also get access to these ring of sacrifices this mystical ring was created in a sacrificial rite of velka the goddess of sin another another velka reference it's where will lose nothing upon death but the ring itself breaks a sacrifice is only worth as much as the, as the life it spares oh so another another velka um so londor now we have associated with both kath and velka um in dark souls one they were kind of opposing forces but not really. Uh, Kath and Velka, they were both kind of doing the same thing, working to overthrow the gods, uh, but in very different ways and for very different reasons. Velka, as the goddess of sin, was not beholden to Gwyn and the, the pantheon of gods in, in Anor Orlando. So if they were doing stuff wrong, she was fully within her right to go after them for doing those things wrong. Kath was in it to bring in an age of dark and an age of man, so he was also looking to overthrow the gods, 
uh, but for a very different reason. Um, interesting that you find both of these items together. It, that, that, that's my point. What it means, I'm, you know, that, that's my speculation. I think Londor is an, an amalgamation of all these ideas where we're throwing away the idea that there needs to be light and dark, um, and that we can just be hollow. We can, <laughs> we, we don't need a soul. Uh, cause ultimately that's what hollowing is. You lose your humanity. You lose your connection to one of the, the, the Lord souls from Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 1. Um, and maybe that's Londor's solution to the problem. The Cathedral of the Deep wants to wash it away with water. Maybe the, the, uh, the hollows of Londor just don't want anything to do with the Lord souls anymore. And that last line, a sacrifice is only worth as much as the life it spares. So, that's a really interesting, really interesting line given where this quest is going to take us. So, hmm. Uh, I don't really want to buy any of these. And honestly, the Ring of Sacrifice is good in a, maybe a couple different locations in Dark Souls 1 if you don't want to lose your souls for the required deaths. Uh, but in this game, I don't think there's a single required death, so I don't really need that. And I don't really want to buy a purging zone. Till we meet again. Until we meet again. Very, very interesting. I did not know that about that quest line, honestly. I did not know that that was right here and right now. Uh, you know, why don't I stop by... Okay. And see if he's got something to do for me. Ah, good, wasn't I don't think I have another Estus shard yet. No, no, no more Estus shards. Uh, let's reinforce. I have nothing to reinforce. Great. Can I infuse? Do I want to infuse? That's that's kind of the thing. My infusion infusion options are very very limited at this point in the game. I don't even think I can infuse this weapon specifically. So. Pretty be careful. So yeah, we got a plus three there, Flamberge. I'm really thinking about switching over over to the Astora Greatsword. The problem is, and I and I I you know I've been playing this game a little bit off screen just just to try and mess around with some stuff. Um, the that C in dexterity ranking here on the Astora Greatsword makes me think that it's more of a quality weapon than a true strength weapon, whereas this makes me think maybe the opposite. Uh. So we we're 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 gonna be rocking the executioner's greatsword, I think, for a duration. Whether or not I want to switch over to this Vihanda, that's gonna have to depend on how many shards I pick up. Because really, at this point in the game, uh, your shards are limited. You have a very limited amount of shards that you can get access to without farming for them. Uh, and until I get that unlimited shard option uh, through the shop, I really do not want to experiment too much with weapons we'll be getting that actually pretty soon it's a it's a really clever hidden thing <laughs> ah the cleansing chapel excellent we unlocked this shortcut last time we're gonna take the uh, elevator back up We're gonna see if we can explore a little bit more of this area. So we came from that area. We can either choose to go down or we can choose to go into here. Uh, going into here means we gotta deal with this guy. So I think we're gonna wait on that. <laughs> As you can see, he he gets he gets mighty angry right away. Whoa! And then he just ducks right back down. So we're we are gonna go down here first. I want to see what's down here. I honestly don't remember this area as well as I should. It's not all that complicated. There's really only two sides to it, um, with multiple floors up and down on either side, and then the third floor, and then the third side on the far side of the of the the main hall there. Um, that is where the boss is, and that's basically the same. Ooh, that is such a tricky dodge, and I'm getting so much better at dodging it. Gotcha. 
So she was guarding something. I don't Did she drop something? There's kind of that glow on her face. She did. She dropped the evangelist gloves, which we already have, I think. He was guarding a deep gem, which I don't know if we've taken a look at the gems yet. We, we haven't really. Uh, the Twinkling Titanite. Uh, yeah, it's just for unique weapons. Heavy gem for strength weapons. Uh, raw gem to make a, a gem raw. Uh, let's take a look at these. I don't know if they have any lore on them. A gem of infused titanite introduced to Lothric by the Crystal Sages. Uh, so that's some lore right there. The the Crystal Sages, which we have equated back to Big Hat Logan, uh, who is by extension connected to Seath the Scalus, who developed crystal sorceries. Um, that's how Lothric got them. Fire gem uh, found in rare cases inside demons. We are dealing with demons later. <laughs> uh, the deep gem. Found in the dregs of the Cathedral of the Deep. Dregs. Uh, there is a darkness that lies beyond human ken. Uh, human ken. Uh, ken is kind of... Uh, the, the easiest way to describe a ken is like the human world. The human perspective of the world. Uh, this is very Lovecraftian in a way. And, and much of the Cathedral of the Deep deals with kind of a Lovecraftian spin on it. it the... The allusions to an age of deep water, of, of water overtaking, and what kind of gods would be associated then, if any. Uh, the Cathedral of the Deep and the lore associated with that does not denote a god. We've, we've already talked about that. Even Aldrich is not a god, he's a saint. Uh, the fact that e even in there, there the stone here, uh, there is a darkness that lies beyond the human ken. What, what interests me most is found in the dregs of the Cathedral of the Deep. I wonder what those dregs really are. The, the dregs are a covenant item, which we will get to at some point later on. And I'm wondering, it, it, it gives me a little bit more latitude, I guess, with trying to figure out what the dregs actually are. And I fall for this trap every time I come through here. Oh, I always forget these guys are just hanging out on the ceiling. And they take my life. Luckily, I've got a torch. Honestly, the torches do the most damage here. <laughs> and it kind of stuns them a little bit. You can upgrade this torch like a normal weapon. So, <laughs> if, you're, if you're having trouble with these guys, it's really, really nice. Plus, just having a, a usable torch. Alright. Not sure if I want to take, take out this guy from afar or... You know, I'm going to wait for him to go back down. There he goes. Okay. Let's go, go, let's go, 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 go. And really, there's a couple enemies up here. Uh, ooh, actually, I want to get some of these items. Okay. Enemy gone. Lloyd Sword Ring. Okay. I'm going. <laughs> I don't want to stick around. The easiest way to take care of this guy, uh, you can either take care of him from afar, or you can uh, take care of him right here. Um, we're going to wait for the other option. Oh, rough. Rough, rough, rough. And we got out of there. And he goes back down. Once we get down to the bottom floor, we'll we'll take another look at him. Because he's, he's a bastard. <laughs> So there is danger in this room. We talked about mimics. If you remember correctly, the chains face the wrong way, and if you look down, you can kind of see them breathing. Yeah, he's breathing. Give him a wake-up call. Watch out for that grab attack. Why is my game freezing? This is great. There we go. The, the problem with the game freezing, um, some of it has to do with OBS. I, I narrow down some of the problem. Uh, the other part of the problem, unfortunately, is I think an NVIDIA driver. Uh, I finally decided to update some of my NVIDIA drivers because uh, I got some new games for the Black Friday sales. And unfortunately, I think a few of them threw off the games that were already working kind of well. I specifically had to turn off shadow play, which I don't use. I, I use OBS, so 
we got ourselves a deep braille divine tome a braille divine tome of the deep belonging to the deacons of the cathedral give this to a storyteller to learn miracles of the deep intended to teach divine protection to the deacons of the deep but later dark tales were added to its pages such that it is now considered a thing profane so not a no, uh, there's some implications here. It, it was intended to teach divine protection, which we've seen those types of miracles before in Dark Souls 1 Dark Souls 2, but Dark Tales were added later, uh, which is very interesting to me. It means that maybe the Cathedral of the Deep wasn't always the Cathedral of the Deep. Maybe it was something else. Uh, the biggest suspects for me are things like the Way of Light, who are heavily associated with divine protection and uh that sort of thing really the only one that's that's associated with the gods in in some way other than maybe the princess guard but certainly not the uh the dark moon tomb we're gonna wait we're gonna hold off on that we're gonna go up here first there's a couple ambushes and if you if you if you're smart, what you'll do is you come up here and you'll look around real quick. Because you can see here, there's a guy. One of those little slave dudes hanging out. There's a couple others. Yeah, you can see another one up, up on top there. What we might do, wait for him to come up. There we go. They both come up at the same time. Oof. Did I get counter damage on that? There is a mechanic for counter damage where if an enemy is attacking and you manage to hit them uh, halfway through their animation, you do get some protection there. Uh, it's not great. Oh, ho, ho. devilish laugh. And I wonder if that other guy's going to come back up because he did fall. So seek guidance. I'm going to wait to read that until after I know what, what's up with him. <laughs> he might just still be down there all right let's take a look at that spell real quick seek guidance it's a first miracle no way miracle of stray souls displays more help from other worlds and reveals summon signs without using an ember faith serves as a guide for clerics meaning they should have no need for secondhand wisdom be that as it may this miracle has been passed down from soul to soul providing a tiny ray of hope for the lost so kind of interesting in this game uh that miracle has been in, I believe, all three Souls games, or Dark Souls games, rather. Um, the inclusion of being able to see summon signs while being unembered, that's new. Uh, I haven't messed around with miracles too much in this game, but if that's true, and maybe that's worth leveling up some faith just to test that out. Because I honestly, I, I, I'm not a big miracles guy. Uh, I got burned hard on miracles in Dark Souls 2. That was the first time I ever really experimented with them. And then after about six months of getting used to miracles, they nerfed them. Nerfed them to hell. <laughs> okay, this guy. This guy is a problem. Not least of all for that. He buffs his weapon. You can see there what that weapon buff does. Um, when he strikes the ground, he lays a, a few of these mines. And you can see here, he doesn't stagger. So you gotta be real careful. I'm gonna die. Whoop. Yeah, and there we go. <laughs> so, uh, I've been th I'm thinking a lot about some of the implications here for the Cathedral of the Deep. Some of the some of the larger implications. Uh because the thought never occurred to me that the, the Cathedral of the Deep might actually be one of the older covenants that just reformed. Um, 
I wonder if there's any other evidence for that. We'll have to, well, I'll, I'll keep that in the back of my mind as we go on. Because we have seen evidence that All Father Lloyd was probably over time uh, overthrown as kind of the leader of the Way of White. Maybe not, not overthrown in the very, in the literal sense, but uh, overthrown in the way that, uh, a leader is is posthumously maybe uh, have have their th authority taken away. Let's grab these items before exploding bolt. Oof! Actually, exploding bolts would be really good against this guy. Ah! Oh, oh, died again. <laughs> Man, I'm really happy. I'm not keeping a death counter on here. I should really try to take him out. I should really try to take him out. I should. I love this vista. There's another good shot of the giant's tower. Excellent, excellent. And this is just one of the, uh, the towers off the side of the cathedral there. I tell you, man, these games, these games... And I've been playing a lot of uh, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, and it's it feels like the right way to play that game. Uh, I'm having a lot more fun with Scholar of the First Sin than I did with just the vanilla game. Uh, some of the enemy placements still feel a little unfair, uh, but I feel like it's a lot more like a classic Dark Souls universe. Um, as opposed to uh, what was in the base game, where it, where it felt like one of the one of the defining features of a Dark Souls game really is having options. And unfortunately, with Dark Souls 2, trying to get through an area, you didn't have a ton of options. Not not really. There were there were some fake options that you could give yourself. Uh, but when you're trying to go through an area in Dark Souls 2, you normally had to kill every enemy on the way to the fog door. Like, that that was a given. You had to do it. He's still there? He is still there. Screw this guy. You get a throwing knife. See you later, sucker. Uh... Oh, come on. Aggro for me. Blow dart, seriously? Come on, son. All right. Get rid of some of that ambush here. All right, let's go for it. This cathedral knight, he's going to be the death of me. Uh, actually, why don't I put on this charcoal pine resin? Give myself a little boost. Yep. That worked really, really well. <laughs> that worked super well. And there we go. He's just looking into the sky. That cocky son of a bitch. <laughs> all right, folks. Unfortunately, I am out of time for this episode. I would like to thank you all for joining me. If you have any thoughts on uh, the Way of White maybe becoming the Cathedral of the Deep, that's something I really want to explore. But as I'm going through the game... Uh, if you have any evidence that maybe might point me in the right direction, please do so. So that when I get there, I can be like, hey, like, this user said, dude, check this out. So, woohoo. Uh, I am the Orca Theory. Thank you for joining me. I will see you all in the next episode.